man this is some hard wood this piece ain't never seen it bust out like that but i'm putting that screw in at enough of an angle that it's going through these two pieces and into those two pieces so it's got four pieces of lumber tied together All right, well, hopefully this starts putting it into perspective how robust this is going to be. I mean, plywood has a strength that people just don't understand the way it's all laminated together. So what I'm doing is just gluing and tacking all the pieces right now. And I'm trying to put nails like here on this piece. Before I put this piece up and I couldn't see my timbers anymore, I shot two nails per timber. That way I can kind of go back and measure. So long story short, what I'm trying to do is make sure I'm getting two nails in each piece of timber and not really hitting the gaps. I don't think it'll matter as many nails I'm wanting up putting in this, but uh, just kind of want to make sure I got it just right. And I'll come back and put, I mean, I've got thousands of nails to put in. I've done put thousands in already. So what I'm doing up top is, because you got a triple beam header, I'm getting a nail in every single beam. And I'll do that. I think the plans call for like every four or five inches. Tremendous amount of nails up top. So now hopefully you can see how everything's getting tied together. This sheet of plywood being glued and nailed into every single timber is essentially locking every one together. So even though I already had these nice heavy duty screws locking timbers together, now they're getting locked vertically. Uh, there, there's just no way this wall is coming apart. I think you could run into this thing with a bulldozer and the whole structure would come off the slab. You know, it's not gonna crumble or come to pieces. And keep in mind, I'm gonna do this same exact thing on the inside. So I got a whole nother run of plywood to do. I'm also gonna do it on top of the roof. The plans actually say you don't have to uh, put plywood on top of the roof. I'm gonna go ahead and do it. Why not? I'm already at this point, done spent this much money. I might as well lock this thing in even stronger than the plans call for. So this is about to get uh, pretty monotonous and boring. I'm going to go ahead and keep gluing my wood up and uh, putting a bunch of nails in. So I may throw this thing and fast forward. And I'm actually going to plywood over the door and go back and kind of caulk and seal every seam. You know, like these and whatever on the roof. Because I think I'm going to drape a tarp over the top and put this up for just a little bit. While we enjoy our little Thanksgiving holidays and get togethers. And then I'll come back out here and get to work on it. But I want to seal it up good enough that water won't get all in it. So still got a little bit to go. Like I said, let's throw it and fast forward. I got a bunch of nails to drive and boards to put up. Then I got to get up and trim all that off and uh, also do the roof, drape a tarp. And that's enough for today.
Well, we are sheathed, minus about another 2,000 nails that I need to put in. <laughs> but uh, oh, that looks a whole lot better not looking at all these mixed match timbers. So I can tell the structure is very slightly out of square based on the way some of the corners are fitting, but uh, that's okay. We can cover all that up with some hardy board siding. So one thing I would have done different, you see my corners have, uh, they're kind of gapped out and not completely together. So like that right there, that's because if I had this to do all over again, I would not follow the plans. Plans call for the structure to be eight feet by eight feet. Well, once you sheathe an eight feet by eight feet structure, it's gonna leave a gap in the corner unless you had taken an inch and a half off of the total measurements per side because three quarter ply, three quarter ply. So I probably would have done that if I could do this all over again. That way my corners would fit real tight. Um, that really doesn't matter because once I put my siding over it, the corners are gonna get completely enclosed, you'll never see. But for right now, while I'm trying to seal this up and let it sit, uh, you know, for a week or so, even though I'm not seeing much rain on the radar, it'd been nice for those corners to have been fitting really tight. So that's something, if y'all were gonna build one of these, I'd say make the structure an inch and a half smaller so your three quarter ply can overlap on one of the corners. So now I gotta get up top, cut all this off flush. That's gonna be fun. Probably just need to pull a chalk line and be done with it. And uh, then I need to sheathe the top, caulk the corners, pop some more nails in. I'm gonna throw a tarp over it and uh, we're gonna knock it off for a little bit and enjoy the holidays.
Well, we have us a nice big wrapped up Christmas present is what it looks like. <laughs> Just a big square cube, a box. But it's definitely wrapped up. Um, Man, I do not like the looks of some of this stuff that's coming. There's supposed to be like 0% chance of rain the next five days, which I'm happy with. But these clouds keep getting darker and darker and thicker and thicker. So, whew, I don't know. I've got all the caulk in the joints, but I got it in so thick in some spots. You know, it's going to take uh, a little while to dry. However, it is starting to get tacky already. A lot of wind out here. So, this CDX is rated for a slight little bit of moisture. But looking at the forecast, I think I'm okay. I'm not wanting this to get wet, but if it does right now, after this uh, caulk dries, I think it's okay. As long as we don't get them on soon. So, nothing fancy or special now. It's wrapped up. I'm going to go ahead and uh, shoot a bunch more nails in it. I'll do that off camera and get all this uh, plywood really locked into these timbers. And I'm sure some of you are wondering, Whoa, hey, wait, wait a minute, where's your door? How do you know how to get back in there? Well... I went ahead and did something. Actually, I need to caulk that while I'm thinking about it. So I went inside in the top corner of the door. I drilled a hole. Bottom corner of the whole, uh, door, I drilled a hole. And then I measured over to each corner on the other side and just kind of drew me something on the outside. It's 70 and a quarter inches tall, 35 wide. So now that I've got two reference points, these holes, I can come out here and take my level and, uh, you know, draw a line over, drill a hole, draw a line over, Take the circular saw and cut in and i can always come and just kind of cut a hole in the middle climb inside and then really get it measured out so that won't be a problem we know the center of the door is at the center of the seam here but uh, since i went ahead and measured and drilled me a couple reference points i shouldn't have a problem getting that doorway cut back open all right well like i've mentioned several times in this video we're about to go into the thanksgiving week here so i'm going to kind of scale some videos back and take a little break from working on this we just have a lot of running around to go do doesn't mean i still won't post videos i probably will but as far as big significant full work days on this that's going to stop uh for just a little bit so what we're going to do next is i'm still playing with a couple ideas in mind on a roof uh, i want to make something extremely robust but I also am thinking in mind that if we ever get in really bad storms down the road, chances are that's the first thing that's going to go. So I'm trying to think about maybe sealing the roof underneath. So if we do lose the roof in the middle of the night, in the middle of a hurricane, uh, the structure's not compromised and getting wet. So I'm, I may coat the entire top with some of that kind of flashing material. But I'm still playing with a lot of ideas there. So it's just going to be a standard pitch uh, tin roof. Actually, I'll probably do a lower pitch. You know, the lower the better small overhangs i don't want wind to get up under it but i still want this to look like a shed and look good and kind of match everything else around the property i don't want this to look like a storm shelter you know i want it to look like a garden shed so that'll probably be the next thing um roof i've got to start now that i've got a doorway measurement go ahead and try to find where i can order some metal that's extremely hard nowadays i had a place a while back that would ship it pretty reasonable and you could order it now the shipping it's like 500 dollars to order 500 dollars worth of metal so outrageous i'm gonna go to the next big city over and kind of talk with some welding shops see if i can get some stuff because i want to reinforce this with much thicker metal than the plans are calling for so again me kind of going off plans but a lot of the decisions that i'm making i think i'm making it even stronger and i want this to last a lifetime and i already don't think we're going to have a problem with that so let me get all that figured out we'll get some videos made and i'll get back to you in the meantime I heard rumor I might know where a little bit of firewood is, so we might have some firewood videos and a few other things coming up. So thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this.